What's going on, friends? Sapper is back once again. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In the background here, though, we have the PO Poly Magneto X 3D printer. It's a pretty unique printer. It's a pretty unique offering, I think, to the standard of 3D printers because the X and Y axes are driven by electromagnets. It's fairly unique. I've never seen anything like it before. And for some particular reason, I'm drawn to it. But that's not all, friends. We also have the dry boxes from Polymaker have finally arrived. This is going to feature inside of this video because, of course, the video today is brought to you by PCBWay and Polymaker. So let's get straight on into this one. You are watching a master at work. This channel is sponsored by Polymaker and PCBWay, the best choice in filament and PCB manufacturing. Explore PCBWay's 3D printing portal. Easily upload your STL file and choose from a spectrum of exotic filaments for that special project. From PCBs to 3D prints, trust PCBWay.com for your unmatched quality and innovation. Visit them today at PCBWay.com. When Mark from Pio Polio and I bumped into each other at Rapid while I was in LA, we talked about the Magneto X and I commented that Although I had seen him and the machine at several rep rep festivals that last year, I hadn't actually seen the machine printing. So several weeks had passed since it was delivered, and there it was still stuck on the shelf like it had some sort of magnetic pull, keeping it inside of the box. Well, today is finally the time to break it free and unbox this marvel. The package arrived in pristine condition, a clear sign that it was handled with care. But let me tell you this, it isn't the kind of box that you lift without effort. If you've been skipping an arm day at the gym, you might find yourself attracting some sore muscles. This thing is solid, and it's clear from the start that you're dealing with a heavy-duty machine. If you're wondering about magnet puns, let me know how many I've done in the comments below, and I'll send you a spool of filament. Once you pry the printer free of his magnetic grip on the packaging, you'll be pleasantly surprised by how much of the assembly has already been taken care of for you. The unit comes mostly pre-assembled, so setting it up is a snap. No repelling frustration here. Start by cutting a few strategically placed cable ties designed to keep everything secured during transit. Next, remove some of the well thought out plastic holders that are practically clicking their heels, ready to let the machine shine. From there, it's time to attract the final components. Pop on the screen, snap on the filament holder and plug everything in. The design is so intuitive, it practically draws you in, making the whole process an absolute breeze. It's clear that the printer was designed to connect with users of all experience levels, from the unboxing to the setup, everything just clicks. Now it's time to let this magnet-driven masterpiece show off its true potential. Now, if you're watching this video thinking, yeah, I might just want to buy one of those, I would definitely suggest you check out their Discord server and also their wiki page. Look at it here. The page does a great job at guiding you through the unboxing and setup process. There's nothing here that will intentionally trip you up. However, if you're brand new to 3D printing, this might be more suited for a more experienced or mature user. If terms like clipper or editing the printer.cfg make you go, huh? Then it's worth taking some time to watch some additional footage on YouTube to reaffirm your commitment to this purchase. I'd highly recommend checking out the hunky Michael Laws over at Teaching Tech, who already has done a lot with the beta units. Another great resource was Fedder over at 3D Print SOS, who recently got his hands on one of these to review. And also, if you look at Reese Innovations, Ken, I met him recently at Rep Rep Festival, and he's been deep diving into this machine as well. It's worth noting with these recent machines, they have been updated and they are the production ready versions, not older beta units. And what's even better is that Pia Poly seems to be listening closely to user feedback and have been making improvements as they've gone along. The most unique feature on this 3D printer is the electromagnetic drive feature on the kinematics, which is focused here on the X and Y movement. Away from the usual belted movement, Pier Poly have made a drastic change away from the traditional. This teamed up with a 300 by 400 millimeter bed and with a 300 millimeter drop. The build quality of the Magneto X printer aesthetically looks more to have an industrial feel, which is more like a self-build look, which personally I don't mind. However, due to the whistling engagement of the hotting cooling fan, I will be looking at Pier Poly's enclosure kit, of which I will follow up in another video. The extruder is an all metal Lancer combo, a planetary gear setup delivering on grip, torque, quick and easy access, quick load and unload buttons on the top. And to top it all off, it's lightweight at only 149 grams. Back on the fans again though, these are also held on by magnets, which aids to this well thought out conceptual design. A surprise onboard 1080p camera, a seven inch touchscreen, 
And even more of a surprise is a full spool of PETG carbon fiber. And yes, it's a full spool. So full respects for user privacy with no mandatory cloud usage or hidden data collection. So kudos to Pia Poly. So onwards, we print with this dry box. After a few bedding in prints, I noticed that I was getting some pretty bad prints out of the PETG carbon fiber by Polymaker. Tell me, what have I done to deserve this? This quality? The prints legitimately looked terrible, so I played around with the profile to see what I thought would be the best settings. But then I remembered that PETG is super sensitive to moisture, and the plan overall is to use this machine for industrial printed parts long term. I think I might have left this PETG out on the table for around about two weeks, so I needed something to dry it with. So I turned to printables.com and found a PolyDry Magneto X mounting bracket along with a wall mounting kit. I downloaded these, but just before that, of course, I needed to dry the filament. To do so, you pull the box apart and find the dryer. I added the hydrometer and the desodent box and adding the silica gel into the box. In my case, I dried the filament for six hours, taking the reading all the way down to 15%, and then, well, hit go on the framework. On the poly dryer, there are a number of levels. So depending on what material you're drying, you'll change the power and the drying time. The boxes lift off of the drying element and two airlock covers keep your filament locked in until it's time to be used. The frame came out perfectly. I heat sunk some threaded inserts into the printer frame and simply pop the dry box on. Now I'm ready to go for all those magneto printing needs. Thanks to Polymaker for these dry boxes. And of course, if you want to get your hands on one of these, please use my link in the description as it helps the channel. Thank you. So let's quickly attract your attention to the specs before we polarize the print, the performance, and the upsize and downsize of this magnetic marble. So the key features on the Mag XY motion system is able to achieve three micron precision with the magnetic linear motors that'll have your prints perfectly aligned every time like they're drawn to perfection. High speed printing with up to 800 millimeters per second. Well, this printer is repulsively fast and there's no time wasted here. High flow lancer extrusion hothead with a flow rate of up to 65 millimeters squared is it's the North Pole of extrusion tools, nothing can resist its power. True closed loop control, ensuring real time adjustments that keep your prints firmly in pole position. Advanced leveling featuring a 48 point load sensor leveling that attracts the precision like a magnet to metal. It's open source and fully customizable with firmware for makers who field their own ideas. Field their own ideas. I'm literally going to hell. So to sum it up, this is a machine that I've really enjoyed experimenting with so far. It features some well thought out components that really stood out to me, like the clever use of magnets in its design. And I don't just mean on the X and Y, a detail that I appreciated obviously earlier on in the video. The overall aesthetic lends to being more towards an industrial functionality rather than being visually appealing although it's certainly not unattractive. That being said, the rapid movements are so intense that it shook the entire shelf that the unit was on. The fans cutting in and out actually led me to reach out to Pier Poly to see if they could send me an enclosure, because to be frank, this is a machine that I want to use more. And having said that, there's so much packed into this machine that I've not even mentioned yet, including 48 point bed leveling, 22,000 millimeters per second acceleration, and fast bed heating as it uses a thousand watt AC supply. And the only failures that I've had when printing has been when the load cell is accidentally caught onto the support. And you can see that just in here. Since then, I'm being a little bit more thoughtful with the overall speed and support structure. This is because that load cell doesn't seem to be forgiving at all. Now on the print quality, dialing in the stock profiles has been required. And although the fiber on print does look incredible, and certainly without those VRFs, it does seem to have a pattern which I can only conclude that the printer is being vigorously moved on the platform inside of the racking. Now that is held together with a piece of wood, which I'm certainly going to try and fasten down. And being fair on the print quality, I've been super impressed, but it is very much down to tuning the profiles and also the speed of the printer. To give you an example, that's a cover that I was working on and we give a proper close up look in the next couple of shots, but that is absolutely fantastic. This is a deaf racer part. And again, that's printed in uh, fiber on carbon fiber. And this is a gear that I printed just in PLA and that came out really nice as well. And of course this uh, sour boy, um, with bandage. Don't ask. We'll, we'll get onto that another time. Um, again, I'm really happy with the print quality, but it is very much down to how fast you really want to push this printer for rapid prototyping, or do you want some clarity inside of your prints? I'll tell you what we do. Let's have a look at some of those prints right now. Let me know what you think about them in the comments.
So we're nearly there. The retail price for this at the moment is $2,999, just a snot under $1,300. Again, if there are any specific sales or promotions that I can offer, of course, I will put them down in the description below. Let me know what you think about this printer in the comments below. I think it's awesome. I'm looking forward to getting the enclosure kit. Maybe I'll do a live stream for that. Maybe we'll be able to do some kind of giveaway as well. But keep it locked in. Guys, thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master work.